All right, we are live. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to all the participants. <laughs> this is great. We have a good group already. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is the Sake School of America webinar with Hakai san, live from Niigata, Japan. Hi. <laughs> I want to say welcome to everybody joining. Fantastic. We got a, it's like we have a good group of people here. All right. Well, uh, before we get started with the webinar, I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you are logged on, uh, you should see at the bottom of the screen where our pictures are, there should be a chat button there. Uh, if you want to click on that, you'll get a chat window, and you should be able to uh, see that pop up. And at the bottom, there'll be a little blue drop down. You want to select all panelists and attendees. And that way, you can say hi to everybody who is in the chat with us. So if you want to, if you are able, please uh, say hello in the chat. Let us know where you are calling in from today. If you're in Japan or the US, or if you're in Australia, let us know where you're calling in from. Oh, we got a Brazil. That's awesome. Hello, <laughs> Brazil. Fantastic. Wow, great. Thank you so much. All right, so everyone is got the chat working great. Fantastic. Oh, Las Vegas, hi. Wonderful. All right, everyone. And one other thing, uh, a few spots over from the chat button, there's also a button that says Q&A. And if you click on the Q&A button, you'll get another pop-up that allows you to ask questions. And if you want to ask a question for myself or for Hakai-san, uh, so we don't lose it in the flow of the chat, please go ahead and put it in the Q&A panel and that will highlight all the questions and we'll be able to see them uh, when we get around to the question part of the interview. It'll keep them separate. So please feel free at any time to put in a question into the Q&A panel there. All right. Well, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to introduce myself first. My name is Timothy Sullivan. I'm a sake educator with the Sake School of America, and I'm also brand ambassador for Hakai-san Sake Brewery, and that's the brewery we're gonna be visiting with today. I had the good fortune to work for 12 months for one year back in 2017 uh, at Hakai-san as a brewer. I did a 12-month internship uh, making sake there, and uh, it was a wonderful once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I'm very nostalgic uh, doing a <laughs> webinar today with Hakai-san because I haven't <clears throat> been there since uh, last year and I'm very anxious to go again as soon as I can. Uh, but for now, I'd like to introduce uh, the person we're going to be interviewing today. Uh, this is Masato Nagumo. Hello, Masato. Uh, good to see you, Tim-san. <laughs> How are you doing? You. How's Niigata? Uh, it's really good. Today is really a sunny day and then it's a really beautiful day today. Wonderful. Yeah, so. Why don't you give us a quick self-introduction and tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so uh, I'm Masato Nagumo from Hakkai-san Brewery. And I was born in Hakkai-san and then I joined Hakkai-san Brewery 2018. And then since this May, I became, became vice president of Hakkai-san Brewery. I think I'm not ready yet, so <laughs> <laughs> I need your support. <laughs> Yes, so you're, you're currently yeah, vice, president, you. vice president, vice yeah. president of Hakai-san, yeah. just got promoted, <laughs> wonderful. And uh, where are you right now? What building are you in? Where are you located right now? Uh, so I'm in Yukimuro, the, the facility of Hakai-san. Maybe I, I should explain about Yukimuro first, maybe? Yeah, yeah, tell us a little bit about the building you're in and uh, what goes yeah. on there. So I will show you the picture. Can you see that? Yeah. So we are located in Minami City. 
Hakkai San is located in, in Minami Onoma City. And then this area is really famous for deep snow area. Okay. So sometimes the snow reaches two meters or three meters. Yeah, and, and that, this, picture, that picture yeah. is from Hakkai San's guest house, right? Guest house. So wow. in, in winter season, the snow covering everything. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> That's amazing. And then, yeah. And then the snow has been used natural refrigerator in this area. Mm -hmm. And then we use that snow country culture for Asian hour sake. Yeah. So this is Yukimilo, the facility of Hakkai-san. Okay, so, so that's, the, that's the building you're in right now. Yes, yes, yes. So we put the snow inside this building. Okay. And then we age our sake. All right. And then this is the picture when we are putting the snow inside this building. Yeah, you know, when, when people ask me about the snow storage cellar, about this Yukimuro, they always say, how do you get the snow in? <laughs> one, yeah. one lady said once, I bet, don't you just open the roof and let the mm -hmm. snow fall in? <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, that's such a good that's idea. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually how they do it. And this picture yeah. is very rare because they only fill the snow storage one time every year. Yeah. Okay, really. that's, that's usually in February around there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yeah, like that. So, so this, uh, this uh, room is quite huge space, actually. And then we put the snow about 1,000 tons in here. Yeah, so that's 1,000 tons of snow. Uh, the height, for people listening in, the height of this room is about mm. three stories tall. And mm. if you look closely in the picture, you can see a little person standing kind of on the left-hand side. And that will give you a sense of how, how tall this room is. And mm. the, um, the snow is on one side, and then there's a partition. And then off to the left behind the partition, that's where the tanks are, right? Yeah. There are 20 tons in, in next to the snow, and we age it we age our sake in, in the tank, in the steel tank. Yeah. For years. Yeah. A lot of people think that the tanks are under the snow. <laughs> not right. The tanks are yeah. side by side with the snow. And the room is also really insulated. So all the cold coming off the snow gets trapped and it keeps the room very close to freezing temperatures all year round, even in the summertime, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. The, the hottest so days the of the summer, it's yeah. still really close to freezing in this room. And the tanks are stainless steel tanks. Yes. Yeah. And then also the, the temperature is like about, about four degrees all over, all over, over the season. Yeah. yeah and so also you... moisture percentage is also stable. Yeah, so the, the snow is giving off uh, some moisture as well. So the humidity is really good in this room too for aging sake. So I want, Yeah, I want to point out one more thing. Mm -hmm. People may notice, it's a little hard to see, but there's some little bit of dust and dirt that's on the surface of the snow. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, let me know in the chat if you can see the little traces of dust and dirt that are on the snow in this picture. Uh, that, uh, you may think, oh, they're not keeping it very clean, but actually this is a really good sign because <laughs> this dirt that is emerging as the snow evaporates, that is all the dust and dirt that was in the air when the snow fell. So, the snow in Niigata acts like a natural air filter and it really traps all of the dust and dirt and makes for a really clean, pristine environment in the winter. I know I was growing up in Syracuse and it's really snowy there. When I would step outside in the winter, the air was really crisp and clean. And that's because a lot of the dust and dirt in the air gets trapped by the falling snow. And here, when the snow evaporates, you can see the little bits of dirt and dust that would have been in the air otherwise. So I think that's always a great thing to see. It's the snow keeping the air really pure. So in winter season, the, the air is really beautiful and clear. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's amazing. And also this, in this facility, there are some shops 
and also tasting counter where, where you can try all of our sake. And then now I'm in, I'm in the tasting counter now. Okay, so when you leave the snow storage cellar, when you come out of that cold room, you go downstairs and then you end up right where you are. So this is yeah, the yeah, tasting yeah, exactly. counter. And if you visit Hakkai-san, you can visit this tasting counter and you can try all the different types of Hakkai-san. Yes, yes. And the, today we, we plan it to show you the inside of the Yukimura, but there is yeah. any signal. So unfortunately, yeah. I'm so sorry about that. Yes, we wanted to go inside the cold cellar, but yeah. the, it's so insulated that the Wi-Fi doesn't work in there. So uh, we had to show you the pictures of, uh, yeah. of how cool it is inside. Great. So. Um, do you want to give us a little look around and yep, show okay. some of the other parts of the Yukimuro building? Yep. So, <laughs> right. So this is a tasting counter where I am and then you can try all of our sake, not only sake and also we, we just sell shochu, rice shochu. So you can try all of our product in here. Mm -hmm. Whoa, look at those yeah. barrels. Yeah, this is barrel. So again, we, we, brew, uh, we brew Japanese sake mainly, but not, not only only Japanese sake, so we, we brew beer and then we distill rice shochu and then we, we age our shochu in this barrel. Wow. So that's aging the rice shochu and uh, it gives it a little bit of color. Yeah, like tastes like whiskey, but no, like more, more bourbon style, grain whiskey. Right. And uh, I remember when I asked about that before, this is American white oak barrels. Yes, right. Yeah. You so want me feel very patriotic. There's a little bit of America in Hakkai-san's Yukimuro. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then this show is called Fubaika. Fubaika. Yes. And then we, we haven't exported yet to the America. Right. So. Yeah. So this yes, barrel so aged barrel aged shochu is not available outside of Japan right now. Yeah, yes, yeah. So Very if cool. someone would want to try, please come to our here. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, let's see, what else can we take a look at? So pass. Maybe the, I should go to the, the shop. Yeah, let's take a look. And then Koja. Yeah. Yeah, this is so right short. past the tasting counter. All right. So this is a shop. Yeah, called Senen Kojiya. Senen. And then we sell, of course, sake and shochu. This is the one I showed, the, the shochu, Fubaika. So that's the barrel age shochu. Yes, the one, this one. Mm -hmm. All right. And there's one mother solo. We only sell in this area. Yeah. yeah. So that one mother solo, that particular sake is only sold at the brewery. So it's a sake you can only buy at Hakai Stan. And also we sell meshu. Umeshu, that's uh, plum sake, yeah. Plum sake, yeah. So there's three kinds of umeshu that you sell there. Again, these are not exported. The plum, plum sakes are not exported, but there's uh -huh. three kinds, yeah. So the black one is based on uh, Hakkai-san sake. Okay, that's and the sake. red one is based on shochu, rice shochu. Uh, okay, shochu base. All right. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, this is fermentation food. So, so like that. This is chicken, and then this this chicken is soaked by uh, soul koji, 
rice mold, salt rice mold. <laughs> yeah. So it's marinated in a koji mold, koji salt, and everything for sale in this shop is somehow related to fermentation. All right. This one is sparkling Hakkai san sake. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sparkling. This one is called Awa. And then and there is Hokusai model. This one is the new one. Yeah. Have you seen this? Yeah. So. No, I haven't. I'm the brand ambassador, <laughs> and I've never, I've never tasted this sake. <laughs> Something's wrong. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let us know in the chat, everybody who's listening. Let us know if you have any Hakai San with you right now. If you're gonna taste with us uh, when we taste in a little bit, let us know if you have some Hakai San with you. Uh, we'll be mm -hmm. uh, gonna do some kampai later. Okay. All right, what is next? So this one, these are the sauce or dressing or something. You should, koji, you think koji. Yeah, so all the dressings, all the dressings and sauces use koji. So they're all connected to fermentation. So yeah, you can use for a salad or something, yeah. <laughs> Right. So and also oh, my favorite. So we make yeah. Uh, there is this is not very old actually. This is cake, <laughs> Banku hen. <laughs> you call it's not a bagel, everyone. Did you get that? That is not a bagel. Uh, let me explain briefly what the Baumkuchen is. Uh, it's a ringed cake, and uh, they cook it on a special oven that has a spit and they cook one layer over the next as it spins. And the final cake ends up having rings like the rings of a tree. And we make this Baumkuchen at Hakkai-san with a little bit of sake kasu uh, in the mix as well. So you get a wonderful sake flavor uh, with this yellow sponge cake. But this cake actually originates in Germany and it became very popular in Japan. And Hakkai-san bought the machinery to make this special cake, but this has a sake flavor. Wonderful. Great. Very cool. And there's some more sake for sale. Awesome. So, uh, should Wonderful. Should I go back? Yeah, let's go back. Tasting counter? Mm -hmm. All right. So these two rooms, the tasting counter and the shop, are literally right outside the door to the snow storage cellar. So when you visit this facility in Japan, uh, if you go through the tour and you, you walk through that snow room, when you come out, this is right where you're going to be. Um, so uh, it's a beautiful building. And um, one of the advantages of aging the sake in the snow is that they don't use any electricity. So it's mm -hmm. a very environmentally friendly way to age sake. Uh, all the cold needed to chill the tanks is provided by snow. So it's a totally analog system. You can't unplug it. It's really uh, environmentally friendly. And this building has actually won some awards as well for being environmentally friendly. So I think that's really great. Wonderful. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> so um, Masato, I'm gonna ask you some questions. Is it all right if we do a little interview with you? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Wonderful, great. So how long have you been connected to Hakkai-san? Uh, so uh, I, I was born in Hakkai-san in Minami Oroma City, and then and then I joined I joined Hakkai-san Brewery since this uh, since 2018. So this is 30th working in Hakkai-san. Yeah. And first year I was working as a brewer, and then since last March I joined sales department. Yeah, so yeah, I'm relating with you. <laughs> yeah, so your, your father is the third generation president, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and you're gonna be the fourth generation president. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so exciting. So uh, yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were born next to the brewery, right? So you grew up walking around the brewery and, and seeing yeah. all this stuff when you were a kid, right? Yeah, when I was a child, I, I, was, I was 
playing in, inside a brewery. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you ever get into in trouble? Did you get into trouble? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so you fun. started, uh, when you got done with your schooling, you started working for the company uh, 2018, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. And so, you did yeah. a, you did a, a one-year internship, just like I did, right? We both did. <laughs> yeah, exactly the same, I think. <laughs> so I would say if someone didn't know anything about Hakkai-san, what would you say are the key points about uh, Hakkai-san brand, Hakkai-san sake? What are the things that people should know about Hakkai-san, the sake? Well, I think, I think, I think the key point of the Hakkai-san is uh, enjoying with food. So enjoying with been, food. Yeah, enjoying with food. So we've been brewing sake for, for enjoying with food because, mm -hmm. and then we want we want to bring out the taste of the meal by our sake, and then we want to make communication go smoothly by by our sake. Mm -hmm. So the 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 main our sake doesn't need to be main things on the table. Right. Main things should be like communication and then dishes and then meal should be mm -hmm. main things, not hakai san. So yeah. yeah, we want to support that great time and we want to create that, that great atmosphere by hakai san. Right. I heard it Thank described you. once this way. Um, you want the, if you have a work of art, you want the painting to be the food and you want the Hakkai San Sake to be the frame. Yeah. So the frame is gonna help you focus on the food and make the food more beautiful, but it's not the main focus itself. So that's a good way to describe it, right? Yeah, that's a good way. <laughs> Thank you. So the Hakkai San style of sake is always supporting the food, but not, not stealing the spotlight or not taking too much attention. So, so usually our sake doesn't have strong taste and also mm -hmm. strong aroma. It's yeah. really, the, our taste is really balanced taste. Yeah, very balanced. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. um, people associate kind of a, a lightly dry, so kind of clean and dry, right? That's mm -hmm. a really yeah, good clean. descriptor, I think, for the general style of Hakkai-san is all about uh, really crisp and clean, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That, that's also a regional style. A lot of sakes in Niigata region are mm -hmm. similar to that way. Mm -hmm. they, they tend to like a drier, clean style, right? Mm. Yes, yes. Tanrei style. Tanrei, uh, yeah. I think the, uh, the not, not, not only dry and not only crisp, but there is sweetness and also a little bit bitterness. So mm -hmm. the most important things to brew our sake is the balance, we think. The balance, really, yeah. 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 That's a good point. You have to have balance. And you know, sake sake seems really simple on the outside, but if yeah. you look closely, there's a lot of layers and a lot of flavors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I want to ask you about Nigata a little bit. Um, mm. what what is Niigata like and how is it different from other parts of Japan? So I was born here and then now, now I live in, in Tokyo mainly. Okay. And then there, uh, in Niigata, in Mirami Onoma City, there, there are a lot of nature things. Mm -hmm. So can I show you the picture of Hakkai-san? Yeah, yeah, let's see. So this is Hakkai San, so the mountain. And wow. then we, yeah, <laughs> in winter season. Look it's that. beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. And then we took the name from that mountain for the brewery. Yeah. So Hakkai San, the brand, is named after this mountain. Mm. Yeah. And, and the uh, water. What? Go ahead. Water that we use for all our products comes from this mountain. I see. 
Really and this small. mountain is also very close to the brewery. You can see this mountain from the yeah. brewery. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the water comes from this mountain and Hakkaistan is really right next door to this mountain, right at the foot of this mountain. So that's yeah. why the brand name is Hakkaistan. Yeah. And right. uh, Hakkaistan in English. <laughs> Eight Peaks Mountain. Eight so. Peaks Mountain, that's right. So I don't know. <laughs> Uh, all, everyone listening in, if I don't know if you can see at the top of this mountain, there's eight small peaks, like a little zigzag at the top. Let me know in the chat if you can see that uh, on your computer. But that's where Hakkaisan gets its name, Eight Peaked Mountain. And uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, those little, those little small peaks. One, two, three, four, five. five. Six, six, seven, seven eight. 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 <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah. this is the winter view, right? This is what it looks yeah, like right. in winter. But even right now, it's springtime. You, there's mm -hmm. a little snow up top right now, right? Yeah. A few days ago, I took this picture, and then the snow remains oh. on the top of the mountain still. Yeah. yeah. I think the winter season is really, it's really beautiful, but also the green, you can see the beautiful green now, and then yeah. white color and snow. And That's beautiful. And so now, and not so cold and not so hot. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. And that, that picture that we looked at with all the snow, the guest house picture with all the snow coming down, that's right where that picture was, right? Mm -hmm. that picture. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Oh, what's this now? This one, do you know why it is, what it is? Is Seems that on. a rice field? Yes, exactly, rice field. But not so for, for brewing sake. Oh, okay. This is for eating rice. Yeah. So, and, yeah. yeah, that looks beautiful. And this, the plants are very small, so this must be just planted, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was just planted the rice now, this season. Yeah, and then also the, the rice grown up in, in this area is the, the most famous, most popular one in Japan, I think. Most popular brand in Japan, I think, for eating rice. That's a Koshi Hikari, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, I remember the first time I visited Hakkaisan Brewery, mm. I looked around everywhere you look, there's rice fields growing mm. Koshi Hikari. Yeah. So the rice all around the brewery looks so beautiful. Yeah. Well, wonderful well, when was that? When was that? The, when, when, when did you come? Oh, really, the first time? Well, the first time was 2008. So 2008? 12, 12 years ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was seven <laughs> at that time. <laughs> never, I never would have thought we'd be drinking together a few years later, but here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Anyway, so there are a lot of nature things in Minami University. So I love, I love here, but, but also I like Tokyo because oh, yeah. there are a lot of great restaurants and then I can meet a lot of people in there. I think more, more exciting place. <laughs> Tokyo is more exciting, but I mean, I, li I like both in a different way. Yeah. And the good way, uh, there is good point between Tokyo and Niigata. Yeah. So from Tokyo to Niigata, is, it takes about one hour half. So it's really close. Mm -hmm. So 90 minutes one way yeah. from downtown yeah. Tokyo to Hakkaisan is 90 minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. So if someone wants to come out really, it's possible to come even, even by the day trip. Mm-hmm. I think that that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. They went to uh, Niigata and Tokyo, yeah. Awesome, great. Mm -hmm. 
So um, we had a question uh, in the chat about the water from Hakai San Mountain. Someone was asking, can you speak a little bit about what the water's like from Hakai San Mountain? That's the water you use to make your sake. So the water, uh, the water comes from uh, used for all other uh, our products comes from that mountain, Hakai Mountain, mm -hmm. and then the water is really soft, extremely soft, no magnesium, no calcium. So, so the 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 key point is that, and then I think I think you can you can feel the softness from from our sake, yeah. And then snow melted water, so yeah, yeah it's really soft. So it's really like mountain stream water, literally. Yeah, it's like melted snow, and uh, it is really yeah, yeah. low minerality, very very soft water. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really pure water. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. So um, I know that you did a training at the brewery. You worked uh, for twelve months. You worked for a yes. year as a brewer. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Uh, yes. For you, what was the what was the most uh, exciting, the most fun part of actually being a brewer of making sake? Mm. So the first year, so 2018, I was working inside it, like a brewery, as a brewer, like a training. Yeah. And then I, I was learning how to brew hot python from rice milling section to uh, pressing section. And then the, and then the most exciting things and then also challenging things is being coagra. Mm -hmm. And then coagra is the, the most premium brewery we have. Yeah. And then that, that time is really hard and strict, actually. And I could sleep only three, about three hours in a day. Yeah. And then, yeah. But, but also was really great and then precious experience for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let me explain uh, briefly about the Koagura. Mm -hmm. So uh, Masato was mentioning working in the Koagura facility. So Hakai-san actually has three brewing facilities. And the Koagura is the most recent facility that they've built. It's a small microbrewery that's dedicated only for the super premium sakes. And it's only open two months a year in January and February. Mm. So uh, when we were both doing our internship, we got to work <laughs> in this facility. But uh, out of all the brewers they have at Hakai-san, they pick the top six people. So the top best performing six brewers get to work for those two months in the Koagura making the super premium sake. And uh, they're very strict at, yeah. during that time. And you have to work overnight mm. and you can't sleep very much. And they made you clean How a was lot. How was that when you were in the core ground? Oh, oh, for me? Uh, yeah. I felt uh, very much in the way all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to do a good job. And yeah. uh, it was very nerve-wracking and very scary for me uh, mm. but i think during that time i learned the most uh, yeah. because the the batches are much smaller in size when you make a, a daiginjo or junmai daiginjo uh, the batch size is much smaller so you can mm. you can take a little more time and pay a little bit more attention and uh it it really was a great learning experience but i was very nervous that i was going to <laughs> Me too. So it was very stressful. <laughs> so what, what was your favorite step making sake? What did you enjoy the most when you were? Oh. Uh, uh, I, I liked being in uh, Muro, Koji Muro. Oh, the Koji yeah, Muro. Koji yeah. It, yeah. The, the, the place is really hot. And then, yeah. But I mean, it was hard, but it was fun. It's a lot, there are a lot of rice. And I, can, I can feel the text, you know, texture of yeah. the rice. And then, yeah, it was really good. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was so so the, 
the koji room is where we make the molded koji rice. And uh, it's a very hot room. It's about 100 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit. So it feels like a sauna inside. Mm, yeah. and over two days, we grow the mold onto the rice. And you have to go in and out of the hot room all day long. Mm -hmm. And you get very sweaty and it's very uncomfortable. And that yeah. was your favorite, that was your favorite part? I have to be honest, yeah, that I, was not my, it was not my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt that kind of tells you for me. Okay, no, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my favorite part, my favorite part was scraping the press, kasumuki. Oh. When you press the sake, uh, you have to open up the panels and scrape wow. out the kasu, the leftover sake uh, leaves. And uh, that, that step, that room, had such a wonderful smell of sake. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, yeah. It was uh, so wonderful. It's the freshest <laughs> sake you can get right from the press. And you can <laughs> smell that when you're, you're peeling the, the sake kasu out. So I really enjoyed that step a lot. Um, special place for you. <laughs> a special place for me, yes. <laughs> All right, and now you're, um, you're working in export sales, is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so- Since last March, yeah. Since last March. So that means you get to travel overseas and mm -hmm. visit. What, what places have you visited uh, selling sake and selling Hakkai-san? Uh, I think la last, year, last year I went to New York four times a year. And then I went to Korea, and then uh, United Kingdom, uh, England, and then uh, Germany, and where am I? <laughs> and a lot of places, some some Euro Europe country, and then and then California too, yeah. Colorado, Colorado. I mean, yeah. oh wow, you've been lots of places. So what? What were you surprised about visiting foreign countries talking about Hakkai-san? Uh, when it, the uh, first time and when I go to New York, and I saw a lot of people were drinking Japanese sake. I mean, not only Hakkai-san, but a lot yeah. of people were drinking. And then they were not only for only old people, like, <laughs> Like in Japan now, <laughs> now young people doesn't really drink Japanese sake. Yeah. Yeah. So I was surprised, and then I didn't expect it. Expect about that situation in New York. Wow. So I was really happy, and then I was really glad to see that. Yeah. So and you, yeah, you saw, I wanted you to saw. show them. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. So you saw young hip people like me. Drinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Exactly right. Yeah. So it's surprising, I think, for Japanese people when they come to the States and they see sake has a completely different reputation in mm. the States versus in Japan. Mm. So that's fantastic. Uh, Masato, we have a few questions from the, from the audience. Can I ask you some questions? No difficult one. Please. One question <laughs> is how uh, about the Yukimuro? Yep. Um, how far back in history does the Yukimuro go? Uh, do you know how long they use the Yukimuro style uh, snow storage? So we established this, uh, we built this uh, Yukimuro 2040. So, okay. yeah. What about so, in, what about in, uh, in history? History. Yeah. Like history. Is it from like Edo Jidai or? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Ancient time that, uh, in this area, we uh, people use for, uh, snow uh -huh. for Asian food, and because there isn't any, there wasn't any refrigerator or something. Right, so, there was no. So they use for key 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 food, and then yeah, something like that. Yeah, for a long time. Um, how many, uh, another question from the chat is, how many, uh, Kurabito, how many brewery workers do you have making sake at Hakkai-san? Uh, yes, we've got 60 people. 60? 60. 60 people. Six zero, yeah. Yeah, and only six people can go to 
to foie gras and to right. brew, brew. Yeah. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that ultra premium, that super premium brewery, Koa Gura, mm -hmm. only six people out of 60 can yeah. work there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure, I think. <laughs> and then those brew, brewers spread their skills each brewery. Yeah. Yes, yes. Share. So, yeah. That's great. So, oh, that's right. It's almost like a training system for the yeah. leaders in the brewery. So they, they spend two months making the super premium and then they might go back to making Honjozo or they might go back to making yeah. Jimmy Honjo. And then they bring those ultra premium, super premium skills. They bring those back to their other, making other types of Hakkai-san. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. So it's almost like a, like a school, like a way to learn. Yeah, yeah. That's I think awesome. so. Yeah. Great. Uh, one more question from the chat. Do you, uh, do you have a favorite Hakkai-san sake? What, which one is your favorite? Well, I, I like all of them, <laughs> actually. But especially, especially this one, Honjozo. Oh, I like Honjozo. Honjozo. Yes. And also, Daikinjo, um, I like. I like Daikinjo, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Honjozo is really... Uh, I think the price and the quality, good price and the good quality. Yeah. So I can train every day and then the life house, house sake, yeah. everyday sake. <laughs> Great. So we have one more question. I think I can answer this one. So a uh, question about the number of tanks we had in the Yukimuro. The question was, did you start with 20 tanks? Yes, we did start with 20 tanks. So uh, it's built out to capacity and uh, 20 tanks is the full number that's in there. So over the years, they've been filling up more and more tanks and I think all the tanks are probably full now after, after these uh, six years or so, yeah. If you guys have any more questions for myself or for Masato, please open up your Q&A panel and be sure to leave us your questions there so we don't miss them. So uh, I don't know about you, Masato, but I'm getting very thirsty. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's evening. For you, it's morning. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can have a Asa Gohan Kampai. Yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> so Always on Sosti. <laughs> We're going to taste four Hakkai-san sakes and do kind of a guided tasting for everyone listening. Uh, if you have your Hakkai-san with you, please uh, join with us. Uh, so the four sakes we're going to taste today are the Awa, the Junmai Ginjo, the Tokubetsu Honjozo, and the Yukimuro. So those four, which one do you want to start with, Masato? I think we should start from sparkling sake. Sparkling sake, Awa, yes. This so one? I have this I one too. Right, yeah. Yeah. So this one is sparkling sake yeah. and made by secondary fermentation method. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and it has a cork, um, just like in a sparkling wine. There we go, there's our focus. Cork in a cage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour mine. So, Tim san sorry, I, I haven't opened yet. So, okay. can I open it now? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, let's see. Mm. Well, the first thing we have to mention about this sparkling sake is that it uses a uh, traditional method or the champagne method. They do a secondary in bottle fermentation. Yeah. And that same creates same all natural bubbles. So let's do a kampai. Yeah. Kampai. Kampai. <laughs> kampai, everyone in the chat. Thank you for kampai, joining everyone. us tonight. I hope you thank have you something joining. to sip on. <laughs> So let's give it a smell and see what it smells like. Ah, it has a very gentle aroma. Yeah. And I really pick up on kind of like uh, fruity notes, like a, a yeah. little bit of melon. It's, yeah, melon. And also banana. Mm. Cool, I think. Yeah. Kind of ripe, ripe fruits, but very gentle, very restrained. Mm -hmm. Very delicious. So let's let's give it a taste. Oh, 
Mm. It's really good. Yeah. Refreshing. <laughs> very refreshing. So what hits me first is that there's a very gentle sweetness up front, but very, very light sweetness. But then the finish is dry and clean. Yeah. That's really what I love about this sparkling sake. Mm. Mm. So when it comes to food pairings, what would you pair with this sparkling sake, Masato? Um, I recommend pair with this sake this sparkling sake with smoked salmon. Smoked salmon? And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that smoky flavor and then this perfect clear taste. It's really good pairing with that, with smoky flavor and yeah. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Mm -hmm. I wanna see if I can show the bubbles. Yeah. Well, there's a very, very fine bubble in this uh, sparkling sake, very fine bubble. And I think that's most achievable with a, a true <laughs> secondary and bottle fermentation. Um, I love to have this sake, this sparkling sake as an aperitif before dinner, mm -hmm. as a way to awaken your palate, get ready to have your first course of food, it's just as you would drink a sparkling wine, you can drink this uh, premium sparkling awa from Hakkaisan. It, it really uh, has that great effect of kind of getting your appetite going mm -hmm. and really refreshing your palate to start dinner. So I love to have it as a welcome drink too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think the Japanese so sparkling sake is tend taste, taste tend to like sweet, and then acidity is a bit higher than normal sake. Mm -hmm. But our, sire, uh, our sparkling sake is, tastes exactly the same as Hakkai san. Yeah. The Korea and Korean and dry taste. So it's really good for a fast drink, for a toast or something. And then you can enjoy it during the meal. <laughs> With, Wonderful. And yeah. the, the last thing I'll say about the sparkling is that. Um, Compared to sparkling wine, the awa has a much lower acidity. So the, the, the acid in the, the sake is much lower. So I find because of that, you can really pair it very well with desserts as well. Mm. So if you have something yeah. a little bit sweet, like a fruit tart, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, something that is uh, very, very uh, fruit salad, or something very gentle, lightly fruity, uh, lightly sweet, mm. I find that the low acidity and the very gentle sweetness uh, brings out the best of the sake too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes yeah, I, I serve it with well. a dessert. Yeah, I think it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go on to, oh, we have a recommendation from the chat, oysters and shellfish. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> oyster, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So this sake awa, the sparkling, uh, all of the sakes we're gonna taste today are all available in the States. So you can get all of these in the US. Um, this is again, the bottle for the sparkling. Uh, and again, it has the cork and the cage, really beautiful bottle. So what should we try next? Uh, I think, what about Honjozo, my favorite one? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So Masato said this one was his favorite. Yep. Uh, this is the Tokubetsu Honjozo. Now this is a really classic label, don't you think? Yeah, it's really classic. I think the most classic label of our product. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna pour mine. Let us know in the chat if anybody is drinking Honjozo with us tonight. <laughs> so the first thing I always say about Tokubetsu Honjozo is that in the Japanese market, for, uh, for the market of sake sales in Japan, this one is the best-selling sake in the Japanese market for, for Hakkai-san. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. yeah. And also the most sparse sake, I think. Mm. So let's give it a smell first. Mm. The smell is really like like pineapples, I think. 
mm, there's a little bit of a fruitiness, mm. but it's also a really clean aroma. Yeah, clean. Yeah, yeah. I get a little bit of uh, yeah. uh, right a ricey note as well. A little bit of mm. grain, uh, yeah. but um, really good balance. Mm. Yeah, Let's yeah, give it yeah. A Mm. It's really ref reflection and a clear <laughs> taste. <laughs> you said that about the awa too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this one is dry and it has a nice round flavor to it. I feel it like coats, coats my palate a little bit, a nice dry finish, a medium bodied, mm. uh, really, really good balance. And uh, my favorite pairing with this sake, with the honjozo, I love to have it with yakitori. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Pare, with yes. pare. Yakitori is the grilled chicken, charcoal grilled chicken on a skewer. And you get a little bit of smoky flavor and that wonderful tare sauce, uh, the yakitori sauce on there. And I find that the tokubetsu honjozo pairs really well with that flavor. Uh. Yeah. What about yeah, for yeah. you? What What do you like to eat with the honjozo? I I think I, I recommend to drink this sake with ramen. It's really good. Oh wow! Yeah. Ramen. Uh, when I go to New York, I always order honjozo with ramen. <laughs> because the yeah the ramen's really popular. Yeah, and the ramen is kind of fatty taste. Has fatty taste. And then this sake is like uh, charred and clear taste. And then this taste caught the, the fatty taste. So it's really good pairing, I think. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Excellent. Very good. And I think I remember when I worked at the brewery, um, the different uh, restaurants that served ramen was a big topic of conversation among the brewers. All the brewery <laughs> workers were talking about which ramen was the best and where <laughs> the ramen. And so it was a big topic of conversation, yeah, I remember, yeah, in yeah. the brewery. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the Junmai Ginjo. Yeah, your okay, favorite one. The next sake we're gonna taste is a Junmai Ginjo. Um, yeah. That's this is the best selling sake in the mar U.S. market, right? Yeah, this is the best selling sake for Hakkai-san in the U.S. market. All right. Hmm. This one is more gentle flavor compared to the honjozo. Yeah, the honjozo was more bold. Mm. And we should also talk about the rice milling too. Mm. So the awa, the sparkling that we had, the junmai ginjo we're drinking now, these are both the rice is milled to 50% remaining. Yeah. The tokubetsu honjozo is milled to 55% remaining. So the rice mm. grain's a little bit more robust for the honjozo. The awa, the Junmai Ginjo, and the Yukimuro we're going to taste last. Those are all milled to 50% remaining. So the aroma here is very light. Yeah. Really light. Super clean. A little bit of steamed rice aroma. I'm going to take a sip now. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> really clean. Yeah, it's really clean and crisp. Very crisp. And you know my nickname for this sake, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> magic water. <laughs> you always say magic water. I always say magic water. It's true. For me, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, magic water. Light, clean, crisp. And I have a perfect pairing with this sake. I love sashimi. I love sashimi. Uh, and my favorite sashimi is kinmedai. Golden eye snapper with this sake is amazing. 
Oh, Please yeah. let us know. Let us uh, know in the chat if you've ever had Hakai Sanju Maiginjo and Sashimi together. It is amazing. <laughs> so good. Uh, what do you have any uh, pairings you like with this particular sake? Oh, uh, I recommend to drink this sake with tempura, especially in this season, mountain vegetables. So oh, yes. yeah, mountain vegetables in Japan actually. Yeah. Uh, Mountain Bisbal has a unique flavor and then soft bitterness, not so strong one. But Junma Ginger is, is really mild, mild taste and round. So I think the, the taste covered the bitterness. So well balanced. <laughs> yeah. so really Let me explain. Let me explain briefly about mountain vegetables. So in Japan, in the springtime, there are wild mountain vegetables that grow and they often climb up the mountain and collect the, the uh, vegetables. But it's only a, a very short window of time, maybe three weeks or so. And something like a good example is like a fiddlehead fern. That's an example of the type of mountain vegetable they may get. And they usually uh, go up the mountain, get them, and then they serve them fried like tempura. And it has a bitter aftertaste, but it pairs so well with sake. It really does. And that's a specialty from Niigata, right? That's the local yeah, area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so we'll let's let, Yeah, let's taste the um the uh last sake. And last then we're gonna sake. take some final questions from the chat, okay? So the last sake is the snow aged. Unfortunately, because of the quarantine, I wasn't able to get a sample of this, but Masato has this in Japan. This is the sake that's actually aged in the building you're in right now. So this is the yeah. snow cellar sake. So this sake is aged for three years next to snow in a steel town. And then uh, alcohol content is 17.0%. And then rice mirroring rate is same as Jumai Ginjo, 50%. And then so the alcohol content is a bit slightly higher than others because this is Genshu. So tastes a bit stronger than others. But I think I think I think you don't feel that much strong alcohol from this, this sake because again, the sake is aged for three years. Maybe I should pour. So, but the, this this sake is aged for three years, but the color is not like green. Yeah. yeah you, usually, the color turn to yellow. Yeah. Koshu like koshu, but yeah. this this sake is aged in the. Uh, three degrees, so it's really good. And also your Kimura. Yeah. yeah, so the low temperature keeps the, the sake clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So the aroma is really, uh, it's a bit ricey aroma. It has a ricey aroma. And then I can feel the more body from yeah. this flavor, yeah. Yeah, the aging, the aging really concentrates the flavor, so you get more umami and more richness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, richness. And then, yeah, exactly. The taste is really rich. Not really rich, but I can feel the richness and then round. But also the texture of the, the sake is really smooth. Mm. Yeah, I don't feel that much strong alcohol person. That's great. Yeah, that's such a wonderful sake. I love it. So before yeah. we sign off, let's, can we squeeze in a couple more questions from the chat? All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a good question about the Honjozo sake. Uh, what temperature do you recommend serving that sake at? That's oh. the Honjozo. So the question was about the temperature. Mm. I, I like, uh, I recommend to drink this sake of course, like cold temperature, and also it's really good for warm sake. 
warm socket. So maybe um, 15 degrees is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. So you, can it, you can drink it chilled or warm, right? Both. Yeah, chilled and warm. Yeah, exactly. And then in, in Niigata, in summertime, uh, we, we drink this, this honjo is a, by warm sake, even in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, anytime, warm sake. Anytime, or season. Yeah, so we have one question about the sake kasu. So that's the leftover pressings from the, what yeah. does Hakai-san do with the sake kasu that's left over? Oh, so uh, we use for, for like fermentation food, we soak some chicken or beef or pork, we soak we saw sake kasu with that, and then we selling that kind of food product. And also, we uh, in sake kasu there is some alcohol in this in sake kasu. So we distilled sake kasu, and then we make shochu from right. from sake kasu. Yeah, and that that's some of the shochu we looked at earlier, right? Ah, uh, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Uh, let's squeeze in one more question. Uh, we have a question about the rice strains. So what are some, what are just a couple of the rices that Hakai-san uses for making sake? Some of the, what, what kind of sake rice does Hakai-san use? Ah, uh, let's see, so we use uh, different, like Yamada Nishiki also, yeah. and we have Mangoku, and then Miyama Nishiki, and then we use, we use variety of the type, variety type, uh, the rice, uh, brewing rice for for each product. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. great. So, so I think I think uh, gohyaku mangoku is really um, very good in uh, Niigata. It's a very popular sake rice in Niigata. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wonderful. So depends on the taste and quality. Uh, for like like honjozo, for this is more sharp and clear and uh, sake so we use this uh, this this sake uh, we use for this sake wonderful well we're uh almost out of time uh do you have any message or greeting for everyone listening today uh yeah okay so Thank you for joining today. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to to be, <laughs> to join this session or so. And then and also we've got website, English version, and also SNS. So we are going to post some information and then please see that. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so the website the is hakaisan.com. Thank you. And the yeah, Instagram is hakaisan sake, at hakaisan sake. So yeah. you can always check our Instagram. Uh, Twitter is hakaisan sake. And the website is hakaisan.com. So you can reach us anywhere online. Um, yeah. Masato, thank you so much. This was so much fun to talk to you. And yeah. it made me, it <laughs> also, made thank me very, you for your support. <laughs> yeah, it made me very homesick for visiting Niigata. Uh, so we're I, always I, hope, waiting for you. <laughs> I hope when the uh, current uh, situation is over, I hope mm -hmm. this year I can visit you in Niigata. I would really love that. I miss everybody there very much. So please say we're hello to everyone waiting. from me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are waiting always. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I want to thank everybody who uh, joined in. Uh, thank you for talking to us in the chat. Thank you for taking time tonight to visit with us a little bit at Hakai-san. I hope this was interesting for you to see just a little bit of uh, inside the snow storage cellar and talk to a real brewer about Hakai-san and get a little bit of a regional insight into Niigata. Um, I always learn something whenever I talk to Masato, and I really enjoyed this evening as well. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to be signing off. Uh, Masato, I'll see you soon. Yeah, Thank I see you, you soon. joining too. us, and thanks to everyone in the chat. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. We hope to see you soon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much.